In this video, I want to demonstrate how to use Pack and Go and explain why we use it. So I have an assembly here of a little grinding fixture opened up. I also have drawings with it. So if I control tab, we can see the drawing files. So I have a sheet set of 13 drawings so far, and I want to give these to someone, probably the customer. So let's control tab back to the assembly. If I give the customer the assembly and don't use Pack and Go, nothing will come through. Shown here is an assembly that was sent to me without the use of Pack and Go. What the customer did in this case was they just took the folder in Windows Explorer and zipped it up and sent me that zip folder. Doing that broke several of the part links. Now I, as the customer, have to take time to restore all the links. Same thing if I give someone the drawings and don't use Pack and Go, nothing will come through. Here we see what a drawing file will look like if it's sent to a customer without using Pack and Go. Wherever a view should be, there's just this rectangle with the X through it. So Pack and Go ensures that all the associated files go with it. So how do I use Pack and Go? Well, with the assembly open is where I prefer to start. You can also do it from a drawing. But I'm going to say File, come down to Pack and Go. And it's going to collect everything. It's going to look for all the fasteners, any appearances you've added to thing, drawing files, etc. And it's going to gather them all together. So I want to check these checkboxes first. I want to make sure I say include all drawings, toolbox components, anything that's suppressed. If I'd created some simulation, I'd want to turn that on as well. And any custom appearances I want to turn on. So here it's going to list everything that's included, which I can scroll through and I can uncheck anything if I don't want it to go through. So the, here's the list of everything, and here's a summary. In this particular case, I have five assemblies, 27 different parts, and one drawing sheet set, and 13 appearances. So 46 total items are gonna come through with the pack and go. Now what it's gonna do by default is put it in the folder where everything already is. And I really don't wanna pack and go to the same folder unless I'm making it a zip folder. So then it's fine, and then I can email that zip folder to the customer or to whoever needs it. It's also handy to use Pack and Go this way, but browse to a new folder because I'm gonna make something very similar but slightly different. So I can Pack and Go everything to a new folder and then open those up and start altering the parts. When I do that, I will add a prefix or a suffix to each part number to distinguish them from these current ones. So if I just want to send somebody my work, I'm going to say save to a zip folder, browse to where I want it, click save, and it will pack and go everything. And then all the associations and links will be there and they can unzip that file and do what they need to do with it.